Okay, YouTube, welcome back to uh, World of Tanks with the Flying Fit. This is Grinding, episode number two. And um, I just want to go over a few replays that I played in the last few days that I think uh, will highlight a few interesting things. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. I have kind of labeled them so we have some idea what we're getting into. I'm going to start off first with kind of some some negative ones in my FV304. So let's start off with uh, with this interesting one on, uh, on Pearl River, um, which was a defeat, as you can see. And this is a, a no cap replay. This is one of those times where I don't really understand uh, why people don't cap. And I feel like there's not enough. I mean, when you watch replays, like you go and you watch jingles or you watch, uh, you know, Quickie Baby or anything like that. They don't often highlight battles where it's like, why didn't you just cap? Oh, my God. Uh, and I feel like that's it's unfortunate because a lot of people don't seem to understand that if you cap and win, it's worth more than getting that one extra kill that you might get by bypassing. But in any case, we start off, you can see we're in artillery, mobile artillery, fairly short uh, uh, shooting range. Uh, the team initially does a pretty good job of looking like they're going to spread out, but we're going to see there's a little bit of lemming happening here. Uh, this Chaffee on our team, I will say, is an absolutely fantastic scout. You're going to see what he does uh, kind of through my my zoomed in view here, my, my artillery view, and you're going to watch him hold down a whole bunch of tanks almost by himself. Uh, now, at this point, I do start to get a little bit concerned because it's quite obvious we're going middle and we're going around the outside. We have no one supporting in here. And, and you know, normally there's a tank destroyer too set up back here to help out, but there isn't in this case. So there's nobody supporting here. And this one SU-85 is half supporting kind of up towards the north. But in any case, we have two flanks wide open. Uh, now, you did notice we did kill that leopard up there, but unfortunately not in time to help our, our friend. But here's that one Chaffee, and look at this. He's a light tank. He's got a medium ducking back and forth behind cover, while two artillery just kind of pommel shots into that area. Uh, you'll notice me and the other artillery are both just putting shot after shot in here. Um, now, for a minute, I think he's Cromwell's going to leave. But then he decides not to. He comes back. So, okay, sure, we'll keep doing it. There is, uh, you can see there's an Excelsior, and I forget who else it is, but someone else has gone over to help kind of defend that other route through the back. At which point the Cromwell does turn around to, you know, out of fears of this KV-2 coming. Which is fair, I'd be worried about a KV-2 as well. I kind of am, hence why I took some shots at him. Uh, but he does duck in behind some cover. You can see the Chaffee. Not being impatient, he's kind of sitting there and waiting. I'm pointing out these two flanks are undefended. I guess, you, you you know, this is a flank for us, but it, it's also a flank for them, right? If the enemy comes down here and comes in behind them, they will be flanked. So, just pointing out two undefended, two undefended flanks. The Chaffee mentions he's watching the bridge, which he absolutely is right over here. And, and absolutely no, I have no complaints with the Chaffee. He has done a fantastic job. Took out a looks. We're working on this Cromwell. He's about to back up into where we can't deal with him anymore, which is fine. So we come back over, we see the Stug advancing and the AMX-40. Now, the Stug, he realizes he's in a bad spot. The AMX-40 kind of comes out a little bit, not quite sure what's around the corner, and just look at the artillery that's going to explode all around him here. Both me and the and the Stug Panzer are both kind of looking here. Uh, so the AMX-40, look at the rounds exploding everywhere. I believe the SU-85 was one of these as well. So the AMX-40 says, I want to get out of here. He moves back behind the rock, behind cover, behind the Stug for cover, not realizing he's just far enough away that we can still get rounds on him. And despite taking an artillery shot when he thought he was covered, look at his response. Damn, nice shot. You know, and that's, again, kudos to him. He's not... A lot of people get impatient, they start cursing, they, you know, they start calling people names. I get not everybody likes artillery, but they're part of the game. You know, just calling people names and cursing doesn't help anyone. Uh, now we've gone down, so the flank fell. Um, now that was me responding to the uh, to the MX Ford there saying thanks for not being a, a dink. Because I've had a, I've I've played a few artillery games and I've taken a lot of heat. In fact, I even played, uh, and unfortunately our Chaffee just fell as well. I've also played some tank destroyer games where people have started cursing and calling me names, and I'm like. What the hell? And they're like, oh, stupid artillery. And I'm like, I'm not even artillery. And they're like, yeah, well, whatever. I'm like, what? <laughs> I don't even understand. But apparently people can be upset. Now, so at this point, I'm kind of taking a look. 
this Excelsior, I don't think can hold these guys down. I was watching to see if anyone would come around, but it looks like no one is really going to move in and support. So our best chance is to cap. And we're going to see that in a minute. I, I take a look over there and we can watch these guys come in. Uh, so we're flanked. Our base has fallen. They need to get in and cap fast if we're going to have any chance of winning. Even though we're ahead by one tank, um, we still are going to have to kind of blitz in if we're going to, if we're going to make this work. So any moment now, I'm going to go over there and start taking a look. I think I already was, but for whatever reason, the game is still showing me looking over here. I'm pretty sure by now I was already watching this. Um, this is a steward, I believe, isn't it? An M5? No, I'm sorry, a T-34-85 moving in. Uh, and he just, he's going to blow right through the cap. He doesn't even care. So you can see me now, I'm looking around. And so here's his KV-85, right? So the T-34 is in the cap circle, and I'm thinking, good. We're gonna, if we get this guy in the cap circle, two will be able to do it. And look at this, he just, he goes right out. He just leaves the cap circle. Like, what? What are you doing? Where are you going? They have no spotter. They can't hit you in here. So the thing is, he just wants to get these artillery kills. That's all he cares about is getting these two artillery kills. But what's that going to do for him? You know, and then even the KV-85 doesn't even care. It just goes right through the cap circle. So it's like, what? what is your objective? What, what is the point here? Why, why would you not cap? And it's, it's baffling to me that people just don't cap. I, I, I really just don't understand it. I really don't. I mean, we only would have had two in there, but we had an SU-85 who had a chance of resetting. Uh, but now we, I mean, we're going to get nothing. It's just going to be a loss. Uh, and for what? So, yeah, that, that's, I mean, that's, that's one of my points, right? A lot of people, they just don't cap, and I don't get that. And I'm just commenting on their ratings here, if you take a look. Uh, some of the guys who are still alive, I guess he's not now, but the, uh, on these ratings have changed now. That's unfortunate. Um, the, the T-34, where is he? He had a rating of 77 at the time I recorded this video. 77 in 4,000 games. So I was like, well, I understand why he is doing so poorly. But I mean, even these, after some time, right? Like 105, and I mean... If you're going to lose, you're not going to get good ratings. Congratulations, you got one extra artillery kill. Didn't help your team, you didn't get a win, you got less XP, you got less money. You know, it just it wasn't worth it. So I think a lot of people really overvalue, get, they just want that one extra kill. And it just isn't worth it. All right, so another next replay we're going to look at is about lemming behavior. And you can see it's right in the name there, FV304. This is on Windstorm, as you can see. This was a defeat. Uh, I believe the replay shows it as a bit of a draw. It looks like it might be a draw, but it is not. We were indeed defeated. It was a loss. So we'll take a look. And this one's interesting because I think this was my first battle of the day when I played this. And I wasn't even thinking about lemmings. It, it never even crossed my mind that there might potentially be lemmings. So literally I'm looking at the map, I'm thinking, okay, there are other artillery on our team to support. Uh, they can help out kind of with the middle and the town. I'll move up and support the northern edge, whoever advances along the north. Cause it never even occurred to me that no one would go north. Um, which I may have just ruined the surprise, but nobody goes north. We eventually get some help after we ask for it, but no one's gonna go north. So we're gonna head out, we're gonna go this way. We're gonna pass behind everybody. We're almost going to run into someone. Oh, there's the MX-40 backing up. We almost run into him, and he's shooting randomly. I believe he even shot somebody. I think he actually did damage there, if I'm not mistaken. Um, which, why people shoot right at the start, I don't know. Maybe it's lag. That happened to me once, where I was like, what's going on? And I'm clicking, and then the game starts, and my gun shoots. And it's like, oh, crap. That's the only time I've had that happen. Or the twitchy uh, trigger finger, as I've mentioned for five times. Now, it's at this point that I look at the minimap and realize that no one has come this way. So I pointed out A4, I give a little ping on the map there, and then I say, hey guys, anyone want to come north? That's when this Churchill 3 starts heading up this way. So we are going to get some support from the Churchill 3. Uh, you can see his M5 Stuart went mid, a couple of Matildas went mid as well. This guy looks like he's going to head town, but I think he also realizes the team is completely just lemming all the way down that far flank and eventually circles around to, uh, to support the mid, but nobody north. Then the KV-1 here asked for help, and I'm like, what? What? Help? Help with what? I was so confused, like, you're following everybody. So because that wasn't clear, I actually even asked him, I'm like, what are you, what are you talking about? 
You'll see that in a moment. And I'm like, help with what? You're the same way as the entire team. Because I'm a little angry, right? Because there's no support up here. There's no one up here. So I'm like, you don't need help. We need help. And, and I also thought he was uh, base camping. It turns out he's stuck, <laughs> which is unfortunate. I never did go look and see how he's stuck. I was still kind of stewing in the fact that nobody went north. Uh, but I decided to give this Churchill 3 a little bit of a push. We'll get him into defensive positions as quickly as possible. I kind of set up here where I have a good view, because I really don't think we're going to be advancing all that far. And there we go. We've already seen the RL-44. Uh, that's as far as we're going to advance. I take my first shot. Falls a little short. Right beside the Dicker Max. And uh, now it's kind of a waiting game. And as you can see, they do see me. I've been spotted. Excuse me. And they seem to believe they have a view on me, so I just back up a little bit. And this is when you can see things start to go bad. That Matilda has decided to go mid with uh, with the M5 Stuart and the other Matilda BP. The enemy M5 Stuart is into our base, harassing our uh, artillery. We do have one lone AMX-40 coming back. I have no idea because I never looked. I have no idea what the KV-1 is looking at now or what he's doing or what his position is that he's stuck in. But the AMX-40 is coming back. Their artillery is on that way. We're about to get flanked by a Stuart. We see it coming. Our Churchill's dead. We move out. I think I get one shot off. I do, and it misses, it goes, so then I figure I might as well embrace the ram. And there it is. Uh, and there's, you can see, they had one guy in the south. They had one guy mid. They're going to have, uh, I believe they have uh, two or three artillery back here camping, as artillery should. I don't fault artillery for it. The one Hetzer who went way down on the flank here. Uh, but literally the rest of their team went north. So we Matilda, so, or, or sorry, we lemminged south. They lemminged north. In the end result, they're going to step in and cap. Our guys are going to be slow to cap. I believe some of these guys even drive through the cap circle and out. In any case, we're slow to cap. We managed to pull off a draw. Uh, just barely. We're, we have the draw in the bag. It is a draw. And then our cap gets reset. So there's really nothing else to see here. I never went and looked at anyone else's view because I was just like, this is so... Oh, I did look around. Oh, I didn't realize I had. So there we go. We can see everyone else kind of lemminged. Uh, there's not much to see. I was trying to get a view back here, but then they died. So it was like, well, what's the point? But you can see our team moving in. They're taking some shots in towards the base. But you can see there's the Matilda. There's the M5 Stuart going in. People are saying defend. Uh, I'm not sold if defend is the right idea. I think we got a cap. I think we got a cap and cap hard. You can see someone stepped into the cap circle, the Matilda. The M5 Stuart kind of bypassed it. And uh, so this is where I say I think we're too late to defend because there's no one anywhere back here. So we need to get in the cap ASAP. Uh, and the Churchill uh, the Churchill 7 there says, yep, we're on it. So he's heading in. Everyone you can see is kind of blitzing towards the cap circle now. But they already have three in. So unless any of their guys leave the cap circle, we're going to lose. And note, we were too slow. Now, on the upside, like I say, we are about to get a draw. You'll see, well, we got our three plus. We have six seconds difference. We're gonna manage the draw. Or at least it seems like we're gonna manage the draw. Two, one, draw. And then our M5 Stewart, our friendly, killed our own guy and cost us the game. What? The M5, we had a draw, and then the M5 Stewart killed a friendly, reset the cap, and we lost the game. So that's, I mean, that's loving behavior, but also stupidity. What, what the heck was the M5 Stewart doing? I have no idea. So in the wake of a couple of bad games, I also managed to have a couple of good games. And actually, things weren't that bad all through. Uh, things were pretty good. Um, so let's look at, I'm going to, let's do this ELC AMX one. I've been, I've been trying to level up my ELC AMX without a lot of success. I think my win rate is like one win in eight games in the ELC AMX. Um, but it, I find it's a tough tank to figure out. And it's with the stock, it's not as quick as you'd think based on the replays that you've seen. But I like this battle because it shows a, a lot of teamwork, at least on the flank that we went on. Now we did get a win as well, but this also showed a lot of teamwork, which I really liked. So we're going to see here once it starts, you can see the teams. We have, uh, you know, we have a bigger platoon than them, two big, two platoons, uh, both bigger than theirs. Um, but yeah, I mean, fairly well balanced, fairly well balanced. 
Um, now, for those who haven't seen a lot of my videos, as far as Kharkov goes, I don't really like getting involved down here in the light tanks. I prefer to kind of go out this way, help kind of spot the stuff that's going on where spotting is effective and it's not just going to be brawling from guys that pop in around corners and then potentially come in and start doing some flanking maneuvers. So we'll see how this goes, but keep an eye on the mini-map. I, I, I've definitely grown accustomed to watching the mini-map and it has served me well. You're going to see some, some what I consider to be fantastic teamwork here and, and almost blindness on the part of the enemy. Some of the things that happen. Uh, there's one in particular you're going to see that's like, uh, oh, you'll see. Uh, I don't want to ruin it, but I thought it was beautiful. I thought it was absolutely beautiful. And I was very pleased that my team had seen it coming, or at least, if he didn't, he had good enough reflexes to make it make it work. So there's typical people complaining in uh, in chat, and then uh, when someone doesn't speak English, complaining they should be speaking English for whatever reason. So we come all the way to the outside here. I set up on this hill initially. I want to see how things develop. Most people are going through the town. There's not a lot of support. That's when I noticed E25 is behind me, and I think, you know what? E25 can sit on the hill if he wants to, or he can advance if he wants to. I'm going to push forward a little bit. We do have this IS-3, uh, who's moving up uh, as well, kind of using the uh, the ridge here as support. Uh, we take a more, some more look around. Now, I'm, I'm waiting, because I'm sure that enemy's going to come up here, and when they don't, that's when I start moving forward. But I was very surprised we hadn't seen more people. And it's the fact that, you know, very few parts of the enemy team have not been spotted that convinces me, you know what, I don't think anyone's even coming this way. I think they've, they've lemminged middle. Uh, but we'll see. So we advance up here, we continue down the flank, the E-25 is hot on our tail, using us as a spotter, which is uh, which is good use of teamwork right there. We pop around the corner, here's where we notice Type T-64 is right there. So we try taking some uh, some shots on the move, and uh, then we start playing kind of wing, ring around the rosy with this guy. Now we do use our maneuverability to good effect, to keep him from being able to aim at us, stay behind cover as much as possible. Definitely watching for that. Managed to get behind, use some more cover. The T-64 is still coming around. Watching the mini-map, you can see there is some support starting to break off and help. We do still have the E-25 there as well. He takes a wild shot that misses, so we go back into cover. The enemy T-69 here is starting to advance to come after us as well. So we got to keep an eye out for that. T-64 gets killed by our E-25. The T-69 has a good look at the E-25, though. Uh, there's not a lot we can do, and here's that support I talked about that's moving in. So we go up to the hill. We get a shot off on the T-69. We don't pen him, but we get his, his attention, right? We basically taunted him. You can see the support that has moved in is taking some shots at him from the back. So we come around the hill here. We give the, the E25 a nice view at his rear. We see him coming. Now I'm like, nope, I'm going to try and use my maneuverability to my advantage. I come back around the hill, and look at that. He runs head first into a T-44. The T-44 saw it coming. He saw him coming around the corner. He saw me going around. He started running in towards him, and that guy came around the corner chasing after me and was rammed and shot at by that T-44 at the same time. And I just think that's a beautiful play. I wish I had had a better angle on it so you could see it developing, but I could see that T-44 coming down. I could see that guy coming around the corner. I thought, you know what, I'm just going to try and distract this guy, get in behind cover, you know, inside his ability to turn and let that T-44 have a shot. And I just thought that was fantastic teamwork up there with those guys peeling off, seeing that this was kind of a bit of a slugfest and no one was really gaining any ground. So now we really have a nice lead. We're coming around behind them. We, you can see they do have an IS holding down the flank, but we're managing to put a lot of pressure on them. E25, uh, you know, Centurion, the T44. Our artillery has moved up in a good spot to support. We've managed to catch their artillery not paying attention. Our first shot missed and he didn't even realize it, so we managed to get a freebie out of that. And of course he has a reload to do, so we got plenty of time to put a couple more rounds into him. He's still reloading, and he is dead. There's artillery done. We did sit still for a while, but they had no other artillery to shoot at us. They just have the Centurion and the Lerva there. Centurion, you can see, is on very low health. is not in good shape either. I sit in the cab circle. Get a nice view of the Centurion. And before I was able to put one in him, he goes down, the Lerva goes down, and there's a win for us. Uh, and that turned out to be about, to be about a uh, almost 1,000 XP for me in that game. Uh, which is fantastic. A lot of spotting, a lot of helping out. The one kill wasn't too bad. 593 damage isn't great. But you know what? The teamwork in that battle, I think, made it worthwhile. And then last replay we have is I'm in my M4. Not my Fury, but my M4. My, uh, I believe it's, um, I still have the derp on it. I don't think I've upgraded the gun yet. In fact, no, I guarantee I haven't upgraded the gun. I have unlocked the second turret, but I haven't put it on yet because, um, there's no real advantage if I'm using the derp. I don't need it, 
it does give you better side and rear armor, but the frontal armor is the same. Uh, and it's a, but it's a lot more heavier. So I, I didn't bother going for it. Okay. So you can see again, layout on this team, fairly well balanced. Um, there is only one artillery to worry about on each side, but it's not a big factor there. So right off the bat, I think, you know what, I got a derp gun, but I have some decent armor. I'm going to head up. I'm going to sit on this corner, I think. I'm kind of on that side anyway. Sit on this corner and try and lock down this flank, just in case nobody comes that way. Because I find a lot of times one tank can hold a flank. I mean, we saw that M5 Stuart do it. And if an M5 Stuart can do it, I certainly can. So I see this Cromwell's coming up. I think, oh, maybe the Cromwell's going to grab that flank. If he does, then I have some decisions. Do I want to support the Cromwell or am I going to go hill? Uh, he decides to go hill. So I see some more hill happening back here. I think, nope, I'm going to go with my initial plan and just sit on this corner. I got a lot of good cover here, a lot of good protection. Pretty much just the top of my turret sticking out. And we can spot what's down here. We're watching the minimap. I'm seeing a good spread. You can see a lot of people are coming up on this left flank, which is nice. There's another area there to worry about. Churchill 3 is moving up to support us, which is nice. Now, I could push with him, but I thought, you know what? I'll stay here and support. There's an enemy M4 there. Kind of knows what he's doing, as you can tell, since he took the one shot and then ran away. Trying to get some, some cover from us and, and other things. Now, this M5 Stuart pulls in. He's obviously aiming at us. We managed to derp a nice round into him. He's not able to, to hit us uh, due to the... the a lot of cover that we have here and then the kv2 comes and now i'm thinking uh oh that's not good luckily matilda moves in so the name of the game in this one as you saw from the title is support you can see everyone is moving up to support these guys moving up to support this guy sitting back at this kv2 supporting these guys moving into support uh no one is really kind of blitzing too far ahead but no one's also sitting too far back in camp i mean i might question this kv2 but i don't know if he can see anything up here maybe he can now this is where, again, use your minimap. I notice the Churchill gun carrier is coming around the corner. So I reposition. Uh, I do see the KV-2 is now going to push up to that corner to support there. I'm worried about this Churchill gun carrier. I'm trying to get a shot at his uh, copula and I couldn't. That's fine. I got a fairly quick reload and of course he's a gun carrier so he's got a reposition. We get up under his lower glacis there. We, the derp. we don't do a lot of damage. This is when I start thinking, uh-oh. I thought I'd be able to do more than that against him. Uh, I don't really fight a lot of Churchill gun carriers. Plus I'm not used to this thing. Um, and I think, honestly, I'm not penetrating. This is just because I'm hitting him with high explosive. And there we go. There's the KV-2 supporting. So thanks to the KV-2 support, this guy is going to take a whole bunch of rounds. Our track is finally fixed. We put the final round into him just as the KV-2 is pushing up. That M4 that's been dogging us the whole time manages to hit our friend there. So I decide to pull in here and, and try and prevent him from being able to do that. He notices we're here and has to pull out, but too little too late. He takes some hits from above. Uh, now this flank has fallen. We do have the KV-2 supporting. We are on low health. But as far as I'm concerned, the objective here is just to spot. We just have to keep the KV-2 aware of what's coming so that he can position himself. He obviously wants that corner. I see him going on my inside. I relinquish the corner to him. Let him have that spot. And then I'm thinking, can I get shots on people from back here? No. Is anyone moving up there? Nope. But I see the KV-85 is coming around to flank. Our KV-2 is, is in support here. These guys are getting ready to come around. We have a couple of guys here who are trying to decide whether to cap or not. I feel like they should have been capping, but that's fine. When it's 12 to 5, I don't necessarily have a problem with it. I was trying to track that KV-2 because he would have been blocking, but I couldn't. So I'm using the wreck of the gun carrier as cover. I'm trying to support my KV-2 as much as I can as he goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with two KV-2s. Trying to keep an eye on both of them. Uh, there is a little bit of a battle going up on that corner as well. I move behind some additional cover. There we go. We put some rounds in the back of the KV-2. Ours gets taken out just as we're about to lose. Look at all the support that's moving in. The whole team is, is blitzing. Now, it's easy to say, oh, good job, when there's only one guy. But again, they did that up on this flank. They did that over here. They supported up on this side. So this just goes to show you, if you can cover all of your flanks and move in with good support, you're going to get wins. That's that's what I learned from this game when I watched it, right? Like, on one hand, I could say, you know what, I sat there, I only did 895 damage with a derp. That's not fantastic, but I mean, I was up against Churchill gun carriers, KV-85s, you know, and the only KV-2s. 
And the only reason that we didn't get decimated is because we had support everywhere there. I didn't push forward, which we've often seen me do. Uh, and at the same time, when enemy came around and I went after him, you know, there was support backing me up. None of all of our flanks were covered. We didn't have any exposed flanks because our team managed to support each other and advance with support. And as a result, we only lost six tanks. So that's I think that's the lesson learned here is that if you if you fight with support, uh, you're going to do better. So that's going to do it for this episode of Grinding. We learned some interesting stuff. We we looked at uh, lemming behavior, which that you know the, the video that I showed you with lemming uh, was some of the worst lemming that I've seen. The whole team, except for one heavy who only changed his mind after the battle had started, uh, and two mediums and a scout who decided to push middle, went one way, and the entire en- other enemy team almost did the same thing. They all went in the opposite direction, and as a result, it became a battle of capping which is almost always going to be a draw, except we had that M5 steward who decided to kill a friendly and reset our cap for whatever reason. Uh, So that happens. Uh, The other things that we had, we looked at um, the result of no capping, right? All those people that rushed through the cap circle on, uh, on Pearl River, for whatever reason, had no desire to cap. They went out scouting artillery and, and ended up dying and then losing the game. What was the benefit there? If they had gone in the cap circle, put pressure on the enemy, you can draw them to you. So that, you know, that was a good example too. Uh, the other thing to take away from that battle though, even though there was a lot of lemming behavior, was that one M5 Stuart who managed to hold down that entire flank almost by himself by using good cover and positioning and by having good support from what amounts to basically two artillery and one uh, tank destroyer supporting him from across the river. That's not a lot of firepower in one area, but we had locked that whole mid and north route down for a long time because of it. Uh, and it wasn't until kind of things started to crumble and they pushed around over the, across the bridge where no one had gone that we kind of started to fall, uh, which was unfortunate. Then we looked at, um, you know, a game with uh, a lot of support, you know, this, this one that we just watched with the M4, uh, where all that support came in very handy. We managed to secure flanks. Um, no one really advanced alone. And as a result, managed to get a pretty overwhelming victory, um, you know, over over everybody. And then, uh, of course, the last battle, I don't even remember what it was. What was the last one? All right, it was the teamwork in our ELC MX where you could see the value of looking at your mini map and adjusting to a changing position. Um, and I'm not trying to take credit for the teamwork that happened there. Yeah, I saw a guy coming down the hill and just got out of his way. But it was him that looked around and said, you know what? The middle isn't moving. It's a stalemate. It's a slugfest. I'm not prepared or in position to deal with that slugfest. Let me go and, and support the flank so that we can get a flanking maneuver in. The the teamwork that I, I'm pointing out there is all on them. The flank, the fact that I managed to run somebody head first into somebody else uh, has very little to do with me and the fact of how things were developing. Yeah, sure, I recognized it was happening, but that's, that's such a small part. It would have happened regardless whether I saw it or not. Uh, but that's teamwork on the part of my team there in in repositioning after the battle lines have been developed. So those are some good lessons that I learned. A lot of the stuff that I learned from playing this week was from watching other people in games that I fought. I saw the lemming and said, I don't want to do it. I saw the support and said, that's what I want to do. I saw the teamwork, said I like it. And I saw people ignoring the cap and said, yeah, if I do that, that I'm going to get a lot more losses and not as many wins. Uh, But that's it for for grinding for this week. I hope you found it interesting. I'm probably going to actually, I shouldn't say for this week, I'm probably going to do another episode this week just to make up for the fact that there was, what, two weeks almost where there wasn't a single World of Tanks episode. So I'll try to do another one this week, but expect to see these only come out once a week, kind of at best. Uh, I hope you don't get too used to seeing them every every three or four days here. because it just it takes time, I think, to learn. And the, the more I play, the more um, or the less opportunities there'll be to learn something new and potentially the less replays there'll be to kind of show off. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you do, leave a like. It really does help me out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. For now, though, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.